back for the next weekly daily Wednesdays where we can sit back, relax, take the midweek break, and talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of penguins. I'm Vin Stone. That is Joe Bryant, and that is Pedro Mateus with you at Hello. home, joining us live. <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh, we're we're still inside, that, mm-hmm. but I think that's going to come to an end eventually, soon, hopefully. You never know. I much much to Pedro chagrin dismay. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I'm very much enjoying this. I am. I'm not going to lie. I am. <laughs> Nori is going crazy. She's like, the days are starting to blend together. I don't know what day it is. Oh, God, someone let me out. <laughs> well, you basically Aww. boil down to all days in with Y, and, you know, you separate yeah. your day between caffeine hour and alcohol hour. Yep. yep. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's dark out again. That means I can start drinking. <laughs> 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 oh man, have you been up to anything fun? How's that NAS coming along? Mm-hmm. Um, well. <laughs> Previously, <laughs> on Weekly Disney Wednesday. <laughs> very, very top heavy. Okay. But yeah, there no, it's. Uh, there's no motherboard in it. Oh. I ordered a replacement, but uh, the mm. nice eBay seller only sent it in today, so gonna be waiting for a couple more days yeah as somebody who had to wait two weeks for the dude to like put something in the mail but then again there, there's no point it's eventually going to show up when it yeah. shows up uh jill you've been up to anything fun oh yes so i had a wonderful time on destination linux last sunday being interviewed and a guest co-host and it was just it was great getting to know ryan of dos geek michael tonell from the from this week in linux and noah chelia from the ask noah show and getting to know them even more and the show comes out later today so tune in to one of my favorite linux podcasts and it was so much fun right after <laughs> I had a great you finish weekly daily wednesdays um, i know <laughs> yes <laughs> which is that comes my out later fav- today too <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yes. and of course this is my favorite podcast of course <laughs> <laughs> Good retraction there, Jill. Yes. <laughs> you could hear the screeching from all the way out here. Yep. Aww. Man, I've been playing around with a bunch of new stuff. Um, probably like I was saying in the pre-show before we got going, I, I got these new cans. Um, yeah. Old school Sony 7506. They're the Noctua of headphones. They're not pretty, but when you see them in somebody's case, you're like, yeah, you know, you know what's up with that. And you're like, yeah. And... Um, <laughs> They're going to replace the bargain basement, which are great, great headphones for EQing. If I probably hold those in frame, that works a bit, but they hold them AKGs. Mm. You know, these are 56 ohms. Good for voice. Open ear, but I got to give these about two weeks before I can re everything. I can hear all the bass in my voice and I don't like it. Um, yeah. Because I normally <laughs> get to like 68 hertz and just slice that down. Um, let's see. Yeah. Outside of that. Uh, for the beautiful, beautiful people helping us uh, make this show over at uh, patreon.com. I have put out the 2020, this is how everything works in the studio with a big warning. Old man rambles for 22 minutes and, you know, covering how OBS is set up, how we're doing the captures, how the video stuff is working, the audio chains and how our IP based audio system works mm-hmm. with mix minus and all that fun stuff. So go enjoy that if that is your bag. But yes fedora 32 is out yeah oh yeah yeah <laughs> and um we're real happy happy about that mm-hmm. this is blogs.gnome.org now there's a bunch of stuff uh pedro and jordan will talk about but the most important thing at least to me is tim is working hard on pipewire pipewire is going to be hopefully well it's billed to be the drop-in replacement for all the things uh, a lot of the Jack apps are currently working with Pipewire. I'm keeping a close eye on that because I need it here in the studio for OBS, Audacity, Adore, Discord, and it's already kind of in Chrome, so I don't have to worry about support getting at it there. But uh, Tim mm-hmm. did note that, hey man, Pulse Audio support, it's still a little bit of a hot mess, and to which I added to, well, it it, it is Pulse Audio, and I was the, uh, but there were definitely a couple other big changes. Uh, the video portion of Pipewire. They've, they've definitely done some work with Firefox with capturing and Wayland. So that's going to be, it's very interesting for me to keep an eye on that um, because it's going to be the one to bind them all. That That's what it says on the tin. And 
hopefully it'll get there. It'll be that drop in. It'll be the equivalent of core audio, like on a Mac, like what you, everything just, boom, it'll take care of it. You don't have to worry about it. And I want that to be a thing on Linux to help me help other people get up to speed because it's kind of hard. And one's like, how do I get started? What do you know about timings and buffers? You know, that's step <laughs> one. <laughs> Julie yeah. said a couple of things in there that she oh, liked. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So this is this is actually huge. Uh, getting Firefox working better on Wayland. Uh, this is a really a, a major mile, milestone for those of us who've been working, been waiting for Wayland uh, to become a big boy on Linux. Um, but what's really cool is the Wayland version of Firefox is now as stable as the X11 one. WebGL hardware acceleration support now default on Firefox Wayland. Pipewire support for WebRTC conferencing on, on Firefox Wayland. Uh, that's, that's major. And uh, what was really nice is in the article, which was very well written, it says, uh, with fi with, they said, with Firefox, we finally could move on from make it work with Wayland and Pipewire to let's take advantage of these new pieces to make Firefox on Linux better. Mm. Yay. <laughs> but yeah, that's major. not all, Pedro, because yeah. they have a surprise <laughs> in store for everyone. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. It's not for me. I Again, I haven't uh, used this, the thing, but uh, a lot of people have, and a lot of people have had qualms with it, like they have uh, with just about everything that Leonard Pottering mm -hmm. has uh, released <laughs> over the years. Yes, I'm talking about Home D, and uh, mm -hmm. he drops the uh, the Home D uh, right there at the end of the article. It's just like in passing. It's like, and we're going to uh, maybe start uh, looking at Home D to see what's what. It's like, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had to put it in there, didn't you? Do you know what, though? <laughs> Do you know what? I, I get 100%, man. I, I wanted to get angry at home, too, but I get it. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, again, mm -hmm. I get it. I haven't tried it yet. I don't know how it's going to affect me entirely. So, yeah. Mm. We'll sit back mm -hmm. and we'll put, we can put um, Fedora. Actually, you no longer have to put Fedora on your Lenovo's. No, no. Uh, yeah, going exactly. forward, you'll be able to yes. buy them directly, and yeah. uh, this uh, this has a bit of mm -hmm. uh, that whole cyclical nature of the human condition thing going um, about it because these are ThinkPads getting in bed with IBM again. But yeah, uh, the L Lenovo folks have announced that um, uh, there will be Linux versions that will come preloaded with Fedora at the Red Hat Summit, and, um, well, they will be coming. There's uh, currently, I think, three models planned, uh, and they're all Intel. That That's the big one. Mm -hmm. It's like, can we get some AMD with that too, please, <laughs> Lenovo? But, yeah, it's, um, it's Fedora, pre-installed on Lenovo laptops, ThinkPads specifically. So, yeah, no, no it's got a, a nice... A cyclical thing going for it. Uh, yeah, I mean, this could be yeah. what the P1 Gen 2, ThinkPad P53, mm -hmm. the ThinkPad X1 Gen 8 laptops. And yep. it's going to expand, which is really neat. But one thing they mentioned, you know, most of these are going to be shipping with um, discrete graphics in the form of NVIDIA. And yes. they make the mention that, hey, man, uh, the hardware's in there, but out of the box, that, that the binary drivers are not installed. It's Fedora, because they have zero consistency when it comes to respecting licenses. <laughs> well, it's just <laughs> one of the... It's always perplexed me, you know? Like, why... If you have an NVIDIA, same thing with AMD, even it's easier to do an AMD, but the binary blob, you're going to want it installed, especially on a laptop. For battery yeah. savings right there, man. Um, <laughs> that Prime, it ain't going to do uh, itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's something they can reconsider. What do you, what's your take, Joe? Oh, well, I thought this was actually very exciting for Fedora and for the new new IBM Red Hat merger, and uh, which, of course, Fedora is uh, under, and for Linux users in general. And actually... As I've talked about before on LWW, having another major brand laptop with Linux pre-installed will help bring the adoption of Linux to the desktop. 
So this will really help desktop growth on, on Linux. It's very exciting. Options. <laughs> It'll bring yes. yeah. exactly. not, it's not Options. just Dell with their XPS and, and latitude lines. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Being able to buy something, especially business class like that, that's going to be accepted yes. in the workplace. Yes, workstation. Yeah. As much as you love yeah. System 76 and rightfully so saying, you know, going to purchasing, like, what's this? I've never heard of it. No, no. You can get a Dell. Yeah. <laughs> or, hey, you can get a Lenovo. They're known. Yeah. Known quantity. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. let, 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 everyone's not going to have an opinion on this, but <laughs> disabling snaps in 2004. <laughs> just slightly. By Kevin Costa. <laughs> um, just to start out, I mean, it's like, don't get me wrong, snaps are great. In theory, 100% with you right there. I've said that multiple times. You weren't familiar with snap packages, the sandbox application, you know, snaps, flat packs. This is walking through the simple one, two, three, four, four steps. That's a lot less than I was planning, but <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, dev file, because you can run into situations, which I've seen demonstrated. And like, oh, if it can't find the, um, you know, you're running app, you can't find the dependency, it'll fail over to snap. I'm like, all right, I get that. I get it, man. I'm like, all right, fair enough. But am I going on a limb to saying that if if the step is between one and five after installing a distribution is to like remove one of the things that the distribution's like, hey, look, this is the thing we can do. Maybe it's not the right distribution for you. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. at the same time, you kind of have to, you know, whether we like it or not, Ubuntu is the most popular Linux distro and it is for a lot of people, their first stop when it comes to Linux and yeah, so it's kind of inevitable that a lot of people will end up using it, which means there will be a lot of those people that won't like snaps or like how snaps behave or like how everything takes five or six seconds to open when they're running a PCIe Gen 4 uh, NVMe SSD. To be it's fair, not... that's only <laughs> the first launch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's it, it doesn't feel right, mm -hmm. especially in a freshly installed system where everything should be like go 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 and it takes forever it's like come on but yeah uh, the article itself it describes like everything that you need to run and um you can skip the first two steps and on the third one instead of doing apt purge snap d you can do apt auto remove dash dash purge so it'll not mm. just purge all of the local uh things for snap mm. it'll also purge all of the dependencies the orphan dependencies that get left behind but what if so, i want my calculator installed by snap uh then you can ignore this okay this isn't for you just that's fine I'm keep go running snap awesome. <laughs> you don't know what you're missing Aww. but yeah uh it's basically the command that was in the show notes for the uh last week episode uh just you run that and then you run the uh the one about unmounting the snap core things because after you've run the purge it's already removed all of the directories and everything else you just need to unmount the core from wherever it's been mounted that's it <laughs> yeah well snaps you know they're going to become more and more integrated uh with ubuntu uh so if you really if you don't like snaps maybe you should just install debian <laughs> debian if you really vanilla. really like snaps go install silver blue Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but those are flat packs. <laughs> I know, but if you want to get that or, containerized experience, just go clear Linux. On. <laughs> Everything's a Yeah, a clear yeah. Linux. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the old flat packs all the way. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, Jill, um, oh. you like hoarding old, <laughs> useless <laughs> electronics that should be yes, in the landfill. I do. And th I this, do. <laughs> this has upset oh. you just slightly. Yeah, this is just just really sad but i knew eventually it would come so at the beginning of the month the debian team named x strike force which maintains packages for the x window system decided to pull out a number of old drivers from the debian repository including the r28 128 video driver for the more than 20 year old ati rage video cards and the drivers for mach 64 savage silicon motion sis trident gpus and input drivers for LO touchscreens 
MU Touch to name a few. And this is very troubling to me for many reasons, because like Vin says, I'm a computer collector of a vintage I, 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 old I, I computers. I didn't say collector, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. I'm it a starts hoarder. with an H and ends in I'm order. A <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and you know, I I enjoy being able to uh, have the ability to run the latest and greatest software, albeit slow, on my aging machines. Uh, but the major reason um, that this is so depressing is Debian has always been the Swiss Army knife of operating systems and runs on everything, even retro hardware. And it's because of this support that um, many nonprofits, including uh, Kids on Computers, can maintain old laptops and computers for schools in third world countries. But of course, they're going to be able to switch to other distros um, like Ubermix, which are they're, they're currently using now. So that was just, it's just so, uh, it's, it's depressing. It brought them out in the ma mailing list. As, as soon as I saw this, now we we're definitely talking about a bunch of like 20 mm -hmm. plus year old, we're, we're talking like the Neo Magic. And hey, yeah. by the way, by the way, in my, on the monitor wall of shame, <laughs> I have an ELO touchscreen and that thing was astronomically expensive and I've used it exactly once when someone gave it to me because it weighs a ton even though it's a flat panel I plugged it in and I put Google Earth on it and I went oh neat and never used yeah. it again uh, such is the things you do with such old hardware but this is like Neomagic Mach 64 Trident mm -hmm. I mean yeah. you might have an argument with the R128 because yes, we'll run into those. Do. Like, why does yeah, VGA port that's... work on the back of the server? Um, mm, yeah, it's like back of, of servers that have those really um, old um, ATI. Heck, I, I, you don't need to go to servers. I have a ThinkPad yeah. T42 mm -hmm. right there that uses the R128 <laughs> driver. So yeah. uh, maybe, <laughs> you know, maybe this will lead to the um, people who actually do need that to fork uh, R128 and improve on it. I and just, maybe I, that I, will I, result. I want a new spin of Debian <laughs> that just starts off as like, is Debian stable to cutting edge for you? <laughs> Welcome yeah. to Debian Legacy. You can have that one yeah. free. I wanted to have that thought about if, uh, if you have like vintage hardware, because uh -huh. I always did that comparison with, especially with computers, the same way I think about uh, hey, car analogy, watch out, hashtag slash dot, um, with like vintage cars, because with the automotive community, you have a thing called resto mods, which is, you know, you basically keep the shell and all that and you put new internals and all that fun stuff in it. And yeah, I'm like, ah, that's not really vintage. I kind of feel the same way if I get like a 20 year old piece of kit and, mm -hmm. you know, like some of my son hardware and I'm like, no, but I have the latest version of Debian on it. It's like, get out of here, poser. I, put the yeah. real stuff on it. <laughs> I mean, if you want the true experience, um, I'm only half joking, but you get what I'm saying, man. I mean, it's yeah, like, yeah. yeah I know it, it's having sad. hardware it's... that old yeah. in like legitimate. And I say this to somebody I know in the back of my head right now, I still got to tinker with 30 year old hardware constantly, but yeah, yeah, for like, yeah. That, I don't think this is going to break and it's going to happen. Like Jill said, this is, mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. coming. You can't expect brand new versions of Linux kernel or distributions themselves to support everything from yeah. Genesis. You just can't. Everything. Yeah, like I have my deck alpha, um, which Debian no longer supports, but the awesome thing is the community uh, took it over. So mm -hmm. now people in the yeah. community are updating it. And that's oh, that's a lot of what will happen. So that's it. Really like good. the power of PC alpha. ports for yeah. other yeah. distros. And yeah. yeah. A deck alpha, much like um, my Ultra Tins and um, all that fun yeah. stuff. They're, they're junk. They don't do anything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you can't accomplish work on them. They are like, yeah, oh, I got anymore. a thing. I cut it on. I cut it off. And look, it does the thing. That's it. I mean, it's personal to you. So yeah, don't, don't exactly. try to hold back anything because you're like, well, I don't want mine. <laughs> but it hasn't been cut on in six years. It doesn't matter. Don't. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it did. I cut it on last week. What are you talking yeah. about? Right. I dusted it. Um, <laughs> I ran across this next little bit, um, threw it in the notes because I thought it was kind of interesting. We do, uh, I know I do a lot of video editing. 
So. Yes. Yeah. So I was really excited about this. Caden Live 20.04 is out, just like Ubuntu 20.04, um, with lots of new features, bug fixes, and interface improvements. Um, it has so many new features. Uh, one is the new multicam editing interface allows you to select a track in the timeline by clicking on the project monitor. That's really, really helpful and convenient. But one of the actually the major new features of this release is is the added import and export support to Pixar's Open Timeline I.O. interchange format, allowing interoperability with Final Cut, Adobe Premiere, Avid, and even community support for Maya's sequencer editor. So it's just that that that's huge because you know, that's the beauty of open source is being able, you know, being able to support drivers that work with all the different pieces of software. And you so can put really stars awesome. on things. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So you can, uh, you have uh, now you can color code uh, your, your projects and your bin and the groups. And, um, Oh, the motion tracking received lots of improvements and new tracking algorithms that work a lot better. And one of my favorite things is the zoom bar for keyframes is a welcome feature. Um, you can zoom in and out of your keyframes, which is really wonderful because they're actually very hard to see. I always have to use my magnifying program to see all my keyframes because sometimes I'll have a hundred hundreds on the timeline and those little ticks are very hard to see. So it's really nice to be able to spread those apart and together. That's to, a yeah, good yeah. quality of life. Um, <laughs> man, that's one thing I love that's about. just a very good UI feature. Yeah, you well, know, as a yeah. whole, it's more fine. things need because that. Please, if you're using something like <laughs> exactly. DaVinci Resolve, that's built in. Like, on yeah, that's built layers, in. You have your yes. standard keyframes, and you got to drop down notable keyframe like directly in the timeline. Yeah, definitely. I took the Pepsi challenge with it, man. Um, with H two six five, that's always my test with it. That's what I needed to do. And like, why are you working such a highly compressed form? Because I can, kids. Because I can. I got a thread ripper. Um, we record in H two six five HEVC. Um, lossless profile um timbit it couldn't do it i mean it it, it yeah. tried it tried mm -hmm. but you know you, you go through the timeline <laughs> a little bit then and then it catches up as opposed to being able to script through it it's cpu versus gpu compute um but mm -hmm. yeah i'm I, i'm still gonna try every time because it's an app image doesn't cost you anything go try it for, yeah for like your basic home needs and stuff like that. free software yeah, open source right? yeah yeah <laughs> It's wonderful. Pedro, tell me about all the fantastic movies that you used to make. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> movies? <laughs> when did I make movies? <laughs> I, well, you know, I, I know you're hard at work on the um, PlayStation <laughs> bottom right-hand corner guide. Forgot about that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a problem. Remind me more often. <laughs> Stay Aww. tuned. Uh, okay, this... This is either really cool. All right. For me, this was written. This next story is like, oh, that's I never used it again. It's one of those type things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it kind of showed up at our Discord. That's I just awesome. posted a picture. Then everyone's like, ah, I did it too. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's like, oh, what's that called? Oh, bash top. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And well, if you have HTOP and you think that HTOP is way too sensible and has a far too unified design and everything is far too sensibly laid out, I introduce to you bash top. Dun, dun, dun. There's a lot, dun, dun, dun. a lot of waste. <laughs> no, yeah, that's super that's painful. That's one. the next too one. Late. Too late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of wasted space because um, chances are, if you've been on Reddit any time uh, this week, you probably saw the post about Bashtop yep. and all the screenshots that went with it. Uh, yeah, there's mm -hmm. a lot of wasted space around the graph area because, you know, it's more important to have pretty little dot bar graphs than to um, be efficient with the information that you're trying to show. I don't know. <laughs> is, is that what kind of see I knew? I, I thought it was, a, it was a bit shouty. Um, a little bit. Yeah, it is. It <laughs> is. I'm being honest. And, yeah. But it's cool. It's like, oh, that's neat. Look, it's showing all the things and, you know, it's got the network and all that. And, but yeah, HTOP, because HTOP, HTOP gives me what I need to know. I need to see the processes. I need to see, you know, what usage mm -hmm. count is, how much memory RAM mm -hmm. I have laid around. This, this swap, still, if it's, yeah. yeah this, is, <laughs> this is great. I mean, you don't need, you just clone it. 
and uh, just read it directly out of that directory and look at it and be like, oh, maybe it's something you want to use. This this is yeah. something a younger me would be like, oh, let me show you this cool Linux oh, thing I do cool. when I'm Linuxing. Ah, can you Windows do that? <laughs> look at me, Linux. Uh -huh. then, then I make him take a step back and I wobble a window. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Well, I think it is cool that it has the usage stats for the CPU, including temperature, memory, disk, network, and processes. And um, you don't have to type sensors in the terminal, which is easy to do. <laughs> but, but anyways, it, it, it's built into Bash Top. And what's really cool, of course, it's just the Bash I only type in sensors script. when something smells off. <laughs> yes, it's like, yeah. what's that? Okay, it's not this one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is cool that it's just a bash script that you run, of course. Mm. And there's some modules you can install if you want. <laughs> Good times. So moving I on. I wasn't a big fan uh, of just one thing. Um, <laughs> that's the CPU utiliz utilization just to have that running. It's like, oh, mm. one of my cores is at 2% constantly just to run this. Uh. Try, okay. Yeah. Try to, it, it didn't even. It was a big, more wasted space on a twenty-four core system <laughs> that didn't didn't acknowledge that it was running. It was like what? <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah, so I'm agreeing with you though. It's like that's a lot of wasted space if you're not doing anything. Um, but it's cool. Go play with it. Um, show it off to your friends and your family. Show it off to your cat. Yes. Super paper. <laughs> As I was getting yes. to earlier, it's cross-platform, multi-monitor, wallpaper manager, and it's got XFC support, so you know it's superior to all other um, wallpaper managers. Uh, probably not, but... And there's a KDE screenshot. Dude, I mean, you, you, you got to show, like, worst-case scenario, right? Yeah. This is like, if it can run on KDE, oh, it can run on anything. <laughs> but we are seeing the configurations, and... Uh, it's available. What would you rather install, Pedro? A pip or a snap? You don't have a third option. I got, I, I, I got a loaded penguin stuck to your head. Mm. Oh, yeah, a loaded penguin. Very, very hungry. Uh, pip. Pip. Yeah, uh, I'd probably yeah. go with a snap over a pip, man. I know. I, I, I can I, I'll yeah. take the pip. <laughs> yeah, I did the snap, but I also installed the the very experimental app image, which had issues, <laughs> of course, because it's experimental. Fine. Um, you're able to control <laughs> pixel density correction, bezel correction, perspective correction, manual pixel offsets for fine tuning, or just uh, do what I do, kids. Set mm -hmm. background to a solid color. Be done with it. Look, this one matches. This, you know, the, these oh. monitors aren't even on the same computer, and their backgrounds actually these don't match because I have to have a background to tell who's who on the um. No. Oh. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite functions of Super Paper was being able to save monitor profiles on desktop environments that that don't support profiles in their display settings, like Mate Budgie and LXQT. So mm -hmm. that was really cool. And you can span wallpaper on KDE and XFCE. <laughs> so <very> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the ability to span wallpapers across uh, multiple monitors and desktop environments that don't support it. Mm -hmm. Why KDE doesn't support it in 2020? I don't know, but okay. It mm -hmm. seems a bit weird. Uh, but it it doesn't it it doesn't by the way uh <laughs> but one thing like on the complete opposite end of the spectrum is mate you can span mm -hmm. uh a ginormous uh, wallpaper across all the monitors it can do that mm -hmm. out of the box yeah. but you can have separate wallpapers per monitor yeah exactly like every other yeah. uh <laughs> every other desktop environment out there is like really Really? <laughs> well, you could span yeah. it out. Uh, just do a life hack, man. If you have multiple monitors and you need them aligned, just buy some monitor arms. Just mm. move, move the monitor up and down on left and right. <laughs> oh, that's well, there you <laughs> go. Or just take one with an adjustable arm and adjust it to the same height as the non-adjustable one. Like yeah. I have. <laughs> Sorry, I'm too busy just saying yeah. my background to a solid color page. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. What was that? <laughs> yeah. Good news, and, ladies and, and gentlemen. And Microsoft this is... loves oh. Linux. Hang on, I would do that with the um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Microsoft, Microsoft loves, loves, loves Linux. Linux. There we go. Ta-da. <laughs> so that's a different o kind of horse. <laughs> yes. So last October and November, we talked about Edge coming, Microsoft Edge coming to Linux, and Microsoft developers asked the community to take a short web development on Linux survey, and the results of that survey were positive enough that Microsoft felt that developers would like it for testing on Linux. 
and it is almost almost here. It's coming in July, and of uh, uh, we are on the edge of the precipice, as it were. <laughs> So, so anyways, but what's really cool is that um, they've set up um, not just a, a, a dev channel for the developer edition, but a beta channel as well, well as a canary channel, which is updated daily. So they're really all in. And the, this is this is awesome, actually. Um, even though I probably won't use it, it's it's nice to have another uh, Chromium browser on Linux. <laughs> so. I was about to say, it's like, yeah, let's count the number <laughs> of uh, Chrome-based browsers. I think yeah. honest, that definitely kneecaps some excitement out of the uh, dumpster fire because, like, yeah, it's Chromium-based. I'm like, yeah, I bet it's yeah. our stuff. Hey, look yeah. at this, though. You thought they forgot. <laughs> they didn't. And I've, I, I've got my money bet yeah. for the end of, by the end of 2020. So good news on that side. We will definitely see you in July. My first thought was, man, I think I even posted on Twitter. It's like, I hope this runs better than IE5 on Solaris. Yeah, that was the thing. <laughs> Believe it or not. Go look it up. Yeah. Um, oh, I yeah. had to deal with that nightmare. Oh, boy. But, you know, 2020, <laughs> it, it, it's the gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? Yeah, no, that'll be yeah. an odd, oh, odd birthday gift if it comes yes. around the 14-week mark like they say they will. It's like, oh, that's, that, right, that's okay, going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of presents, if you want to give us one, you can support the show over at patreon.com forward slash lighting scheme cast. Uh, that's how we finance this mayhem and madness. Uh, we got a bunch of levels, a bunch of rewards up to and including access to our Discord. We do an extra uh, bonus show each week that you're invited to come join us live in. Um, mm -hmm. access to our show notes. Uh, we get some early stuff. Try not to pay wall anything, but you know, we hand out some rewards. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, if you want to see some behind the scenes here at LGC, that video is currently available. Our early access to our uncut episodes also in podcast format. We try to dance for our dinner is what I'm trying to yes. say. <laughs> and, um, you know, if that's not your cup of chainsaw, Hey, everyone wants mm -hmm. a shirt with Pedro's face on it. Ah, I know I do, but I'm a massive narcissist, so... I don't know, man. My Pedro family pack is gorgeous, man. We got our Hello shirts. Uh, let's yeah. see. We got the Franks. Uh, we got the one Jill's got on right now. Yes. LWW. Yeah. Yay. Whenever I need a, like, a little extra scratch to buy something for the studio, I just make up a new shirt and Jill bought like six of them. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But uh, that's cool. We want to thank each and every one of you. Keep us loud, live, and independent. I mean that. We don't do commercials. So I'm coming up on 10 years, man. So we've always mm -hmm. been self-financed. That was a, yes. you, you never have to worry about this, this Linux story <laughs> brought to you, except for, right, come on, we take some Microsoft money. I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't do anything Absolutely. after they no, gave it. After I'm we, not even kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After we were free and legally clear, and we, he's like, you can't get it back. All right. Um, <laughs> oh, everyone keep being awesome, and we'll keep trucking on. But yeah, yeah and so, actually, we oh, still on. have. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so, Joe, you got to jump in. You got to overtalk. <laughs> Okay, so we have some two new wonderful patrons. We have two One new is wonderful. Are you sure both of them are in <laughs> fact wonderful? Yes, they are. One is abstraction, and he's in chat right now. And it turns out he's an electronic musician, so I'm looking forward to hearing his work. He's not and a steam they... musician. <laughs> uh, well, he could be because uh, electronic music is a lot used a lot uh, for in soundtracks, steam? of course. On uh, I'm steam talking soundtracks? about pressurized water vapor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> actual oh, boiling I'm water in there, Jill. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> software. Steam gaming. This is Linux game. Cast. I thought there was going to be like a kettle joke coming there, but no, 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 no. No, I'm sorry. So, and also we have Das Geek, who who I co-hosted with on Destination Linux on Sunday. So, and he's he's got Ryan. He's got um, amazing YouTube channel um, focused on 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 all the wonderful things about Linux, and he co-hosts numerous shows. So thank you so much, Dosky. That's awesome. Right on. That is excellent, excellent, excellent. <laughs> Pedro, now can we have that slice of pie? Yes. Now we can divide <laughs> by pie and then eat it. I don't there know how that go. works, but then again, uh, as demonstrated in that week, uh, that uh, stream I did yesterday, my brain isn't working. I was going to ask <laughs> you to math out the top real quick, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if you're feeling it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
of 3.14. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. no guesses, kids. Good guesses. Let's talk about uh, how to track your cat's activity with a dun dun dun. Oh, homemade speedometer. I wanted to track it with a hot dog. Go ahead. As you were. Well, it's a homemade uh, speedometer that you can uh, basically shine a uh, laser pointer at your cat's running wheel because, you know, cats, they're not going to use that thing ever that unless you give them some stimulus. So <laughs> people just use like the uh, the usual laser pointer and uh, yeah. they get them to run it. And uh, this person has a Bengal kitty. And so... They put the kitty on the thing, they shine the, the laser, and there's a Raspberry Pi cleverly hidden uh, behind it that it's a Raspberry Pi Zero with the GPIO pins. And they've, uh, with a couple of magnets, uh, one inside a half of a uh, pillbox uh, that's on the wheel itself, and the other one on the bottom with a sensor to detect when the magnet goes around. The Raspberry Pi does the rest of it, and uh, the author actually says that it was surprisingly easy to uh, figure out when um, the Raspberry Pi, to get the Raspberry Pi to talk to the sensor, because it just mm -hmm. kind of did it. So yeah, though that particular kitty there uh, attained a maximum peak speed of 10.24 miles an hour. That's Aww. a very slow kitty. <laughs> <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Yeah. But, yeah, that would be interesting to see uh, what 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 cats are faster of our our you know house trained felines. <laughs> but what's really funny here is I've actually been watching a lot of videos on TikToks of cats spinning on these cat wheels, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can see this being a new a new, uh, a new TikTok challenge. I think it'd be cool. <laughs> It's like I've seen the hamsters, like multiple yeah. hamsters running on the wheel, and then one just goes, wee! Yeah, well, I've seen the cat videos like that, too, where they're running so fast and they can't stop. And so uh, so they try they try and move off it, and they end up flying <laughs> off in another direction. It's uh, pretty funny. But enough about feline versus centrifugal force. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> microscopes. Little Pies build a sophisticated microscope using Lego 3D printed Odorinos and a Raspberry Pi. A DIY experiment at IBM Reese. Yeah, yeah, we're building a little yes. tiny electron looking microscope. And I am a huge <laughs> fan of this level of overkill. Ah, oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, this would be a great science, uh, uh, great for a science class for a school teaching how to build the microscope and then using it. Be really, really cool. And the creator Yexi Timiz is looking for other creators to improve on his idea. But he did a beautiful job with Legos and um, uh, Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and getting it all lined up and working correctly. <laughs> Just really <Yep>. amazing. <laughs> And oh, uh, I never thought about that, Pedro. Would you, would you try to make a Lego lathe? <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine that the parts would stay. I guess you could super glue like the pieces to each other, but that feels like a social well, faux pas. You know, it, it could generate to... some controversy simply because, you know, the lathe is the only natural <laughs> predator of the Lego. <laughs> yeah. oh. You can use the Lego lathe to lathe Legos. <laughs> Try saying that ten times fast. I don't know. Uh, yes. Orlando blooms one more time and he'll show up. <laughs> but no, uh, it's actually kind of impressive. He got he got the uh, the lens from a 4K camcorder, and just kind of made typical Raspberry Pi camera just do a very good uh, image of the. I think it was a what was it coin that he sure. took of the uh, yeah. The, I coin, mean, it rolls yeah. off the tongue better than metal money disc, but yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no that that that's very nice. Mm. TSA acceptance yeah. factor is not great, but then again, it's Lego. You I can mean, just, you just show up it. with something like that. Yeah. <laughs> not, like, all right, fine, whatever. This is wavy through. Like I don't even want to mess. <laughs> yeah. So if you're building anything made out of Lego and you want to tell us about it, uh, drop us a line. Yeah. We have a contact button that you can slam on our web zone, linuxgamecast.com forward slash uh, contact. I believe I've cleverly disguised it there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can read your feedback on the show. And we'll yeah. But until next week, let's roll some credits and mm -hmm. uh, have Netflix go, <laughs> no, we made this.
Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Go watch the beginning of last Saturday's show if you want to. Uh, yeah. Yeah, find out about that. Ah. <laughs> uh. Thank you to our newest patrons, Abstraction and Dos Geek. <laughs> you all are you. awesome, but you're Amazing. not more awesome than any of the people that will come, you know, after our name. Are you more <laughs> awesome than you already are? <laughs> <laughs> yes, more awesomer. -er. Yes, -er -er -er. thank you to our advisor, <laughs> our producers, our executive producers. You're all all beautiful and we love you all and we can't say all your names because there's just too many of them <laughs> you're all amazing amazing people admitting like i can't read that fast yes <laughs> lww 220 <laughs> Woohoo! can you believe that it's amazing i was here for all of them oh yes. <laughs> Two, five, two, five. all right Bye, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>